We've heard reports local 911 calls have decreased, but some crisis lines in Oregon are getting a lot more calls. Galen Etlin joins us live at home with this follow up during Mental Health Month. And Galen, you know, how has this dynamic changed for people answering those lifelines? Yeah, Kristen, for one, the Oregonians who are answering the suicide prevention and crisis lines, they're mostly working from home right now, like a lot of us are. But the big difference is their work can literally change someone's life in an instant. And right now, during COVID-19, demand from certain groups is rising. It's definitely, it's in the background, if not the foreground, of all the calls that are coming in. Greg Borders is the chief clinical officer with Lines for Life. That's Oregon's extension of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Normally, his staff would be in a room like this, but normal has a new definition these days. You know, people are, are used to working in a team environment um, where we're in one room together supporting each other, and now people are taking calls from their dining room. And those calls are increasing. Lines for Life says its senior loneliness line is getting about 40% more calls compared to earlier this year before COVID-19 hit us because more seniors are feeling isolated at home. And the youth line offering peer-to-peer -peer support for high school age students is up 25%. And that's why Lines for Life has a healthier alternative, it says, to the term social distancing. We're saying physical distancing because we really believe that uh, right now is the time it's more important than ever for people to be socially connected to others. Access to mental health care is so important. Adam Johnson with the Pacific Northwest based company Quote Wizard says Oregon's in a tough spot. Quote Wizard looked at data from the CDC and Mental Health America between 2014 and 2018. It found Oregon had the highest depression rate in the country with about one in four people. Washington was number 10 on that list. Now both also had a mediocre rating for access to treatment. Generally what we found is states that have poor access to mental health care also saw an increase in depression. And now with more people losing their jobs and benefits. So there's a lot of folks in limbo that need that mental health care that do not have access to it because of their lack of insurance. So while access to the health care system could be tough for a lot of people right now, Lines for Life says its call takers are in it for the long haul 24-7. How are your staff taking care of themselves through all of this? Because that's got to be a really tough job right now. You know, it's, it's interesting. We're, we're telling them the same things that we're telling our callers, which is that, um, you know, it, it's important to take breaks. Uh, when your shift is over, close up your computer, put it away, make sure you've got a clear delineation from workspace and life space. Now, an interesting piece to all of this is the Multnomah County crisis line is seeing uh, fewer calls than this time last year. And the same goes for Portland 911. It tells me that it could be because there's fewer people out and about, so therefore fewer emergency calls that need to be brought in. On the flip side of all of that, Lines for Life says it's really marketing its product aggressively, aggressively its resources for people. So it says that people may think to call it now first. Kristen, back to you. All right, thanks, Galen. Such an important service. And one more time, we want to share that Lines for Life number. If you need help, it's available 24 hours a day at the number on your screen. That's 1-800-273-8255.